What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of DT Podcast. How is everybody doing today? Back again with another episode. Yes, I am infrequent. I am busy. And in spite of what you may see on this episode, I'm actually a very happy person. But uh, I need I need to vent. I need to vent. One of the fucking negatives of not having regular gym time or being around people with the same opinions or at least the same interests as you. You don't get to fucking vent. There's one or two guys at work I talk about fighting with or people in my local area that I, I know no fighting. But God damn it, man. I miss being in the gym surrounded by 50 people who we just chat about fights and uh, and the best that I can do right now is this fucking microphone and that fucking camera. Yeah, I'm swearing. I know you shouldn't swear inside the first two minutes of a YouTube clip because of the algorithm, but I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? So welcome, guys. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the UFC and how much the UFC fucking sucks. Jesus Christ, what has happened to that company? And I have prefaced this, but I'm actually a very happy person. <laughs> All right. But this is just me venting, guys. The, the most recent is too early for a beer, by the way. The most recent news, I'll get into it. I will get into it. Jesus. Oh, my God. I first learned about what UFC was in about, I think it was 2004, 2005. Um the Stefan Bonner versus Forrest Griffin, RIP Stefan Bonner. Um, their ultimate fighter exchange. I became a UFC fan then. I had no training. I learned what judo and jujitsu was. I obviously knew what boxing was, never took a class. I did a karate class when I was like 10 or something like that and hated it. I just wanted to rock out. But anyone who knows me knows that my pivotal years with UFC between um I guess learning what the UFC was mixed martial arts other companies that were putting out fights like Pride Strike Force Elite XC um Cage Combat in the UK you had um Cage Warriors in in Southern Ireland you had Cage Gods Jesus what a terrible name for a fucking MMA organization Cage Gods Fighting out of Listol, John O'Brien. Do you know what I mean? Jesus Christ. But um, when I started fighting and I started training and I started learning and I started competing, you know, the, the gold standard was the UFC. It always was. And, you know, sometimes they would have shit shows, but they would have infrequent shit shows and the excitement leading up to a pay-per-view once every two months once every three months sometimes and then their competition strike force you know they were the leading guys and learning the new upcomers at that point the nate diaz the nick diaz all the guys in strike force at that time when ufc came in and took over strike force and you know dissolved those contracts and brought them in as ufc fighters the ufc was the gold standard the monopoly the guys that came in and smothered their competition and brought the talent with it they dissolved the guys in pride a lot of pride guys came over not pride as that uh, what we know it nowadays where they try to infect our kids with their opinion on how the world should go um for one month a year i don't know what that's about but um i'm talking about pride in japan the MMA organizations where they do not test for steroids specified in the contract. We will not test you for steroids. Fucking hilarious. It's too early for a beer. I think I mentioned that already. And then learning, competing, talking every night in the gym about next weekend's UFC fights, going to UFC events. I used to fucking love the first time i saw a ufc event ufc 93 in dublin i went to see ufc 120 in london i went to see ufc fight night in manchester and i went to see ufc fight night in london again 
I saw four UFC events live. The live event is spectacular. You know, between bands, when you go to a concert, the music isn't that high, and you know, you can kind of just, you know, you're just waiting for the next act. At UFC, they keep the, the party going from four o'clock until 11 o'clock. There's music going all the time. They're showing like previews of upcoming fights, and like it's loud and it's awesome. And around that time, we had the transition into the entertainment era. Now, what I mean by that is, who's the more popular fighter? Who's the best talker on the microphone? It wasn't about the knockouts anymore. Coke is not a good idea for a podcast. Uh, and I know what I'm saying now is, in fact, it's, it's my truth that they say nowadays. Uh, you can have an opinion about the UFC not being the gold standard or the monopoly or who's the greatest fighter of all time. They're all subjective topics. But the general gist is, Chael Sonnen was the first guy during the entertainment era to get out and be good on the mic. You had a lot of guys who were just like, yeah, you know, after they won a spectacular fight and you've got this momentum and you've got this microphone in front of you and Joe Rogan is fucking talking to you about what's next. And they say, well, you know, I'm just going to take some time off and spend some time with my family. I'll talk to my management and whatever the UFC wants. I'll fight anybody. And just fucking boring. Is that a fucking helicopter again? Uh, helicopters were in our apartment all morning. Maybe they're on to me. I don't know. But then you had other fighters that would just thank Jesus. And that's fine. Fucking have the Lord in your heart. That's no problem. But... We are the paying fucking fans and we want to hear you talk about what you're going to do next and keep, you, keep us invested, keep us excited and keep you on the momentum. We don't care about who you're thanking up there. We don't care about you spending time with your family. We don't care about your, your, your time off because you've had so many training camps over the last two years. We want to hear about you. Like when Chael Sonnen got on the microphone Google Chael Sonnen if you don't know who he is. And when he started saying, Anderson Silva, you absolutely suck. That was awesome. Vanderlei Silva, six feet, whatever it is. I didn't know they stack crap that high. Awesome. Really killer. It was organic. Don't like Conor McGregor? He's got the it factor. He's got that fucking piece of talent that keeps you invested in who he is, what he's about, and what he's going to do next. You know, he was awesome on the mic. He's a shit coach and he's a shit fighter, but he's awesome on the mic. Um, I just, I just don't know. Like, here's, here's, here's the thing about UFC. I think it was 2016 when the purchase went through for WME, the big guys in, in Hollywood. Um, ESPN, Disney, the Middle Eastern guys. The UFC was purchased um, off of Dana White, the Fertitta brothers, the millionaires who, who brought it to life. And it was purchased for $4.2 billion, right? And it was purchased that way because all the stars that were fighting at that time were all winning and generating fuck tons of revenue merchandise, gate sales, selling out arenas all over the world. Ronda Rousey, Brock Lesnar, Conor McGregor, Israel Adesanya, was he there at that time? Maybe he was, I don't know. I sound like Brendan Cooney. <laughs> the guy knows nothing. Um, I just saw the UFC be purchased when all the stars were winning. And I remember a quote from Vince McMahon that I've said on this podcast with Burke Green before. Vince McMahon decided not to go into MMA. Vince McMahon is the founder, is he a founder and CEO? No, he's just the, the chairman of the board for WWE. And he said, it's risky business because you can't control the outcome because it's you, WWE is scripted. And when you've got a star who loses, sometimes that star factor goes away. Like when Ronda lost her, her last fight, she just fucking disappeared. Conor McGregor could lose a million fights in a row and it wouldn't matter, but he's an, out, an outlier. But all of the stars dropped off. John Jones had issues with drugs and failed 
tests and uh, Brock Lesnar had stomach issues and lost fights and steroid at UFC 200 against Mark Hunt. Um, tested positive, went to WWE, never came back. Ronda lost and never really came back after the last one. Uh, Connor lost. You know, the, all these guys were losing. And then there was no stars. And then they had this contract with ESPN or Disney or where the fuck is, 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 was pushing them at that point. Um, the market got saturated because there was 52 fight nights a year. Like six, seven pay-per-views and then fight nights. And we, all these fighters were fighting and we no, we'd no idea who they were. Like I missed so many fight nights because I'm like, who's fighting? I, I don't know. I'm not going to wake up at three o'clock in the morning and watch someone I don't know. I'll watch the replay on Instagram tomorrow morning. You know, the options are there with the technology. I don't need to see these fights live. And the, 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 the industry, the whole fucking market became saturated. There was too many fights on. And it was a very short-sighted decision because now all these fighters are complaining about not being promoted enough. But the second a fight is announced, they've got to promote next weekend's fight and they can't spend any time on these guys who are fighting in two weeks. So it's like, what are you doing? But they're making millions and millions of dollars every goddamn fight night and they don't probably care. And why would they if they're making all that money? It's like, all right, complain online, we don't give a fuck. And fighters then started to try to emulate the trash talkers. Became very, very cringe. If you're not good on the mic and you try and be good on the mic, you don't have a publicist, you don't have a PR person, you sound retarded. Not redacted like the podcasters use nowadays because podcasters suck. Retarded. And I don't mean that offensively towards people who have physical or mental disabilities. It's 2023. Stop being a liberal pussy and being offended by words. And... You get all these fighters who are trying to be Conor McGregor, trying to be a good trash talker. And it's so cringeworthy. It's so embarrassing. It's so unentertaining. It's like a car crash, though. You can't look away. It's like, look at this fool trying to get our money now for the next event. Not going to happen. We see right through it. There are some casuals out there that will be just like, oh, wow, who's that guy? But for the real hardcore fans like me, my brother, Bert Green, all the guys I know in the gym, pff, all right, man, do your thing, whatever. And then the news this week. The UFC are now trying to put together and have us fucking engulf ourselves in a social media CEO billionaire fucking fight night. Two guys that have no idea what fighting is or was are now getting the push on social media. Anybody know who CM Punk was? Google that guy. Google CM Punk UFC. This is what it's going to be like, if not worse. Jesus Christ. Dana White, a couple of weeks ago, said... Francis Ngannou, who used to be a UFC fighter who's now fighting in PFL, w wants to fight Tyson Fury. And has Dana White has a problem with this because that's not what we do. We put on the best fights in the world. We don't have these boxers come in, blah, blah, blah. Floyd Mayweather, uh, Tony, uh, James Tony versus fucking uh, Randy Couture, Floyd versus Connor. The UFC does do that, Dana. Uh, what's worse is they brought CM Punk in they brought Jeff Hardy in from the NFL who beats his wife. Put him on the same card as a woman who got beat up by her husband. Same night. Rachel Ostovich. Jesus Christ. Now, Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg is being discussed for UFC 300 later on in the year, if not early next year. I, I hear some Colosseum in Italy. It's like, it's like, do you know what it's like? It's like, it's like, it's like Motley Crue. 
I'm a huge Motley Crue fan, always was. Glam rock, hair metal, guys like you know, right, guys dressed in like, with makeup and long hair, whatever. But Motley Crue, phenomenal band. Hit the peak in the '90s. Issues in the band got back together. Now they're touring the world on their second final tour, and they're just shit. They played in Switzerland last week. I didn't go. You see videos of Vince Neil on stage, and it's like watching an old granddad trying to do karaoke in front of five friends. It's embarrassing. Now the UFC have gone from this fucking powerhouse monster, like monopolizing the entire MMA market. The whole fight market is just them to this old withered granddad with a big belly dressing like he's 19 trying to sing in front of people and it's sounding so horrifically cringe embarrassing that it just it beggars it beggars it beggars belief that we are entertaining this and I see the comment section on UFC.com and everyone is fucking loving it and I do not understand why we are now entertaining Elon Musk a billionaire from Twitter, who's going to now fight in a cage, MMA rules. Mark Zuckerberg, the billionaire from Facebook. And where are fight fans going to watch this? Well, guess what? No, I'm not. Are you, are you going to watch this? Let me know in the comments section. If you would watch that embarrassing, horrific, wannabe crap I gotta burp I'm sorry guys and I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave it in too no that was just air I thought it would be more entertaining I'll still leave it in um, Elon Musk is, is supposed to fight Mark Zuckerberg in the UFC and we're meant to take this seriously and Dana has a problem with Francis Ngannou fighting Tyson Fury and he's saying to us that that's a joke Jesus Christ. If anybody would like to post this on their Instagram, clip it and post it, and tag Dana White and have him come on here and explain himself. I'll DM him myself. But from a a low-level beginner podcaster in Switzerland, fight fan for years, huge fan, met Dana White, met him, talked to him for 10 minutes. For that to be happening right now is nothing short of embarrassing. And I don't think there's a lot of fight fans that would disagree. If you do, let me know in the comments. I don't know, guys. I just I, I just see so much crap online now. I just want to get offline and stay offline. I hit the mic. I hit the mic. That's unprofessional as fuck. Um, but I just, I, I fail to understand why this is even being discussed. Like we did the CM Punk project and he went in and looked like an amateur from fucking SBG in Dublin. Um, I, I just, I fail to understand it. If anybody can explain it to me, let me know in the comments. Um, if you want to come on and debate, let me know in the comments or send me a DM. But right now, I have only one thing to finish on. The UFC fucking sucks. Have a good evening, everybody.